What's going on miners? Trump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. Great day to do some solar stuff. As you can see, the sun is high in the sky and I have some more solar panels to hook up to my crypto mining trailer. So if you guys are into that, let's do it. All right, so it's a gorgeous day outside today. As you can see, these are my solar panel setups. I have four all together right here, and then they're on some Unistrut and a couple of fence posts. So I have some end caps here, a fence post underneath with this little, uh, it's like a circle by flat for the U-bolts to hold the fence post, and then comes straight down here and into the ground. If you guys haven't seen my like step-by-step -step solar video, go check that out, I'll leave a link above. But this today is gonna be rewired just a little bit. So I need to put like a 20 foot length from here down, and I'm gonna come across and then I'm going to bring a 10 foot from here down and I'm gonna connect them right here and have one strand run all the way back to the crypto mining trailer. Now, if you can see, I have right here on the ground connection here and then I have a little extra length right here. So I'm gonna to try to neaten these up to keep the connections over there at the panel and then get rid of these obviously and put them over there and then just shorten everything up. So we got right here some more solar panels as you can see, there's two in each box. I got two boxes there. We have some new wires right here. I have this iPolo, if you guys saw that video, I dropped on Friday. This is running completely off of solar now. I actually situated it so it uh, actually does run perfectly. I had some settings off inside this unit where it was just shutting the unit down because the batteries were actually getting depleted, which is crazy. Um, I have right here this combiner box now this is going to connect all of the solar panels. So I'm gonna have those two that are over there on the stands come back to this unit, obviously tying into one side. Then I'm going to have the four panels that are right here behind me on the roof of this unit. So for one, it's gonna help with the rain up there to uh, you know just give a little bit of coverage to those domes even though they don't leak. And two, it's gonna give a little bit of shade to this uh, trailer right here because this thing gets stupid hot. Even though it's not black, it still gets really hot. So let me get those all rewired and situated. I have a 50 foot run. It's just a little tight. So the 50 foot run is gonna come out and I'm gonna take this 80 foot run that I just purchased and I'm gonna use that to get over to that point. And then um, yeah, this 20 foot run, I might have to use to connect the two panels and I'll take out the 50 and the 10 foot or however I have uh, you know that all situated. So either way, let me get this situated and then we'll be right back and we'll throw these other solar panels on the roof. Check it out, look how much I saved here, right? I have two 10 footers right here. I have a 50 footer and a 40 footer, I believe. Now I used to have to have all of those tied together to connect these two runs because I bought the cables before I actually ran the solar and did all this stuff. Now what I did was over here, we'll start here. This, again, these are all in series. They come down this pole here. I have them running over. This is a 20 foot length. Back up and it stops right here as you can see with the two Y fittings. Now I have these in series as well. They're connecting into the, uh, you know, the fitting here to connect them together in parallel and then they run back down and the 80 foot length goes straight over to the trailer. You can see that I have plenty of cable to get this up into the combiner box that's right here. And I might end up moving the combiner box to out there at some point because it is weatherproof if I end up adding a lot more panels. But either way, I want these panels to go on the roof. So it's totally fine the way it is. That's gonna go up through. And I'm gonna leave the coil of extra wire right here behind the uh, battery bank. So that's where that's gonna go. And then we're going to take the next loop. We're gonna run it up. And I think I'm gonna drill a hole, probably not directly over here. I might do it like right here. All right, so I got everything up through this hole, right? That's the 80 foot run. I have it kind of stuffed down here, as you can see. And I took this cable right here going up to the breaker. I'm not gonna disconnect it right now. And I just plugged them into each other. So at least everything is in here and ready to go into the combiner box. So we just turned that back on and the iPolo's on now. We are going to, again, get all these panels over here. 
nice and set up on the roof before we actually tie anything into the combiner box. But that was a huge deal for me to get those panels situated. It looks so much cleaner out here. So you guys can see I have some Unistrut right here, a couple pieces I had left over. And then right here are those angled pieces that how I was going to end up putting the solar last time on the ground. Now we're going to have them like this over that. All right, so that's what I've come up with. It's just gonna angle like that. It doesn't really hang over, just like, you know, a little bit of the Unistrut is hanging over. That's about it. All right, check it out. How sick is that? Got all four panels up here. Pretty secure, I mean, it's just chilling on these angled brackets. What I'm gonna have to do right here is uh, either drive a screw at an angle through here, or I'm just going to silicone the hell out of this area to just kind of hold it down and then put um, a brace across here that'll go under the lid and bolt to the other leg right there so it can't physically lift up because this is secured. So I think that's gonna be my plan eventually, but now what I need to do is tie these all in series and then we're gonna tie them in parallel into the combiner box that we have underneath. So I need to basically positive to negative and string it all the way across and then take the positive from that end, the negative from this end and run them down together. That should give me right around 80 volts or so. All right, so as you can see right here, this is the panel, positive and negative. This one's the positive. As you can see, they are labeled usually with some sort of sticker. So positive has the red 10 footer attached to it and I have it strung all the way to the front of the uh, trailer there. Then we have the negative from this panel right here going into the positive, as you can see, positive, negative into this panel and that makes this go in series. So it takes the voltage from this one and adds it to the voltage on this one, which is obviously 20 or so. It's like 24-ish. This one would be 24-ish, so that would bring you to, you know, 48-ish. And then as you go down, we'll test the line at the end, and I'll show you guys that it's right around 80 volts or so. Now, I have these two strung together with the negative 10-footer because they were a little far apart, so I have that negative right there and this positive tied together with this 10 footer and I just have it kind of coiled up right there for the time being. And then uh, this negative at the end of these four panels are gonna connect to the other two 10 footers that I have, the positive and the negative from those guys and go straight down to the combiner box. So let me uh, figure out where the hell I'm gonna drill this. Honestly, I think I kind of wanna just put it right in the peak, but it does make me nervous to have water over the actual inverter, so I might not want to do that. I'll probably put it over here and then seal it up just in case. All right, so I popped a hole just left of the grow watt inverter, and as you can see, I wrapped some zip tape around the cables, and I'm gonna put it right in the middle there. So those connections are kind of under the panels here. As you can see, it'll just hide it from the rain a little bit. Now, I'm gonna silicone the crap out of this, and I'm actually gonna be lining the entire edge of this unit with flex seal and zip tape just to uh, you know, fully seal it and make sure this stuff doesn't dry out and crack. All right, back inside, you can see that's the hole I punched. It's fully enclosed in silicone, and when I put the zip tape over it, you won't see the daylight through there. I have the strand running down behind the grow watt all the way down, and it's going to loop up and into the combiner box. Now, these lines are right here, and what I'm gonna do is take them, and I wanna show you guys the voltage right here. So. If you look, this is how you test DC voltage. You turn to the volts on the voltmeter and you hit select until it goes to that line with the three dots. All right, this is super hard to record, so I have it against my leg and I'm holding it like that to show you guys there's 87.2 volts. So that's perfect because if you guys remember in the actual solar video that I did, I tested the run that was coming up into this breaker right here and it was the same exact voltage. So that's a good thing. Now we'll have two strands, exactly the same amount of voltage going into these connections right here. And then on the outside of this, now we have a ground which is on the right side. I have to run a wire down through this third connector because you can see there's a front and a back one which is the positive and negative for the solar then the ground that's going to run directly through the hole that i haven't sealed up yet and it's going to go into some sort of ground rod like a piece of copper or something that i pound into the ground just to 
physically ground the solar system. Then we're gonna take those wires right here, we're gonna come out of the box, we're gonna come up, and we're gonna tie right in to where the solar leads go into and eliminate this breaker right here. Solar wires right here, we're going down, as you can see, and they go up into the combiner box, tied into this breaker right here. Then we have the surge protector that's right here being grounded. So I took the, uh, I'll show you guys outside. This is a spare connector, like the one that was coming from here. I cut a length off it to tie this in. And then I took the other end and I stuck them together. As you can see right here, just the red and the black together to ground it to the trailer just for the time being until I get a ground rod out here. And that's the video I'll do the complete walkthrough of how to wire this stuff. But for now, at least I can uh, liven up all these panels and they can do their job for me in here while we're, uh, you know, waiting for that video. So here goes nothing. I'm kind of nervous. Here we go. Didn't see any sparks. All seems to be working. All right, so the solar panels are charging the batteries. That's perfect. Now I gotta turn this on and that'll kick on the iPolo. Yep, bingo. iPolo's on and we're good to go. Dude, this is awesome. I'm excited. I'm very excited about this combiner box and I'm excited to have four more solar panels to the system. Now we have a total of 1200 watts on this system. So that's about it guys. iPolo's up and running, like I said. Combiner box is done and I will go over all this stuff in a slow walkthrough video teaching you guys how I wired that combiner box up as well as the batteries and the grow watt. So if you guys are interested in that, again, let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, I'll catch you guys soon. Peace out. The Meter Box. A familiar product to this channel is back with a new lid that finally offers a solution for home miners using a standard 125 volt outlet to measure their power usage in real time. It's available now on their website. Use the link in the description for a discount off your next order. Because of the new lid, they're now running their biggest giveaway yet for the entire month of July. Giving away over $7,000 worth of prizes like an iPolo V1 Mini Classic Plus, a 3600 watt X12 Octo Miner, tons of meter boxes, limited edition NFTs, and a bunch of stuff from GPURisers.com. Check out their new meter box and enter this amazing giveaway, no purchase necessary. You may also purchase items for additional entries and even better chances to win. The meter box contest is worldwide, extending through the entire month and ending on July 31st. Winners will be announced publicly on August 5th.